Hello friends, today I will be describing Lagrangian mechanics example and Lagrangian of a charged particle in electromagnetic field. This is my second lecture on classical mechanics. So we will start. Now, first we will be doing one example. Look, here we have a mass spring system. One side of the mass spring system is fixed. Another side there is a mass for mass of M. The natural length of the spring is L and spring constant is K. The mass M on this rail is moving. This uh, rail, the mass spring system is placed on a rail, on a stick you can assume. This stick is massless. This stick can move with a fixed angular velocity alpha. So you're, you have a mass spring system. Your mass spring system on side is fixed. And the mass spring system based on a rail, rail can rotate with a constant angular velocity alpha. Now, what are the generalized coordinates in the system? Look, you have a mass. This mass can move on the rail and the rail itself is moving. So, you are getting two coordinates. One is the R the position of the mass M with respect to the fixed point and another is the polar theta. But you need to mind that this theta varies constantly. So theta you don't need to be evaluated uh, in detail. Theta is alpha t which varies linearly with time as this uh, mass is rotating, as this rail is rotating with a fixed angular velocity. Well, what we will do? We will first apply the transformation function x and y will be just L plus R cos alpha t and L plus R sin alpha t which can be easily uh, you can get that uh, if your uh, if your mass is at position R R is the displacement with respect to the natural length means uh, natural length is L the spring uh, the mass is elongated the spring is elongated uh, with uh, R so the length of the mass spring system becomes L plus R. So X is L plus R cos alpha T, Y is L plus R sin alpha T. Now we need to take the derivative. Uh, we are taking derivative X dot and Y dot, uh, getting square and we just adding. So we are getting uh, kinetic energy T equals to M by 2 X dot square plus Y dot square equals to M by 2 R dot square plus L plus R whole square into alpha square. That is your kinetic energy and potential energy of course of a mass spring system is equals to k by 2 r square. So that is potential energy and we are getting the Lagrangian as m equals to m by 2 r dot square plus l plus r whole square alpha square minus k by 2 r square. So we will just proceed to apply this Lagrangian in Lagrangian's equation of motion. We got this Lagrangian and we just apply this uh, l uh, in the Lagrangian's equation ggg of del l del r dot minus del L del R. So, we will get M R double dot minus M alpha square L plus R plus K R. This should be 0. So, what we will get? We will get, uh, we just uh, taking some uh, algebra. So, we are getting M R double dot plus K minus M alpha square as common with R minus this thing. Uh, M alpha square L K minus M alpha square. This equals to 0. So what will happen? We will go deep into the we will go deep into the equation. So uh, if you can see if k greater than m alpha square, so this uh, equation is becoming an harmonic oscillator with uh, omega equals to root over of k minus m alpha square by m. Then uh, if k less than m alpha square, so this uh, your system can move exponentially as you can see that this is also become negative, the denominator. And if k equals to m alpha square, uh, this uh, becomes constant, the velocity becomes constant. And if you physically look, we will get uh, the centripetal forces uh, balances with the spring force. So, this is one example how we can solve, uh, we can get one Lagrangian and we can solve the Lagrangian to get equation of motion and with, uh, with the algebra of the equation of motion, you, we can interpret uh, with different, different cases.
so we now move to velocity dependent potential so you can remember that uh, while we derived this lagrange's equation we assume this generalized force qj equals to minus del p del j and we uh, assume that uh, this potential is not the velocity dependent so del p del q j uh, equals to zero so uh, i can uh, take you a reminder that uh, we had a ddt of del t del q j dot minus del t del q j equals to q j and there we inserted that term the extra term uh, this uh, del p del q j dot uh, here so there that's how we got the proper lagrange's equation uh, in uh, here i am uh, following the derivation of goldstein uh, you can uh, look at the detail of the derivation from goldstein so if you have the time of course so um, uh, we just uh, if we don't assume this uh, two uh, assumption so uh, we will get what we will get we will get that qj equals to minus del u del qj plus ddt of del u del qj dot uh, precisely if you don't assume that your uh, potential is velocity independent so then now uh, we can get a one generalized or velocity dependent potential which is uh, uh, as a function of the but now the potential has become a function of both the coordinate and the velocity and time itself so we will easily uh, can generalize this whole lagrange's equation that we keeping the same lagrange's equation intact but uh, generalized force as minus del u del qj plus ddt of del u del qj so this uh, has become our new our new generalized force well let's we'll proceed so our lagrangian will become uh, as d minus u uh, this whole formulation will remain intact just uh, we are taking the velocity dependent potential so um, what happens uh, is uh, the lorentz force we are with a example of uh, lagrangian of a charged particle in electromagnetic field i will just uh, give you an example this is a very important problem this is again taken from goldstein uh, if you uh, have the book you can uh, look at the detail so uh, here uh, lorentz force on a charged particle we know that uh, if equals to q e plus b uh, cross b so here uh, the force has become velocity dependent so if force is velocity dependent we cannot uh, derive everything from a velocity independent potential so we need to take uh, one velocity dependent potential we all know that electric field and magnetic fields are given by with this equation e equals to minus v at phi minus delta del t and v equals to curl of a so as force is velocity dependent so uh, how we will get the potential uh, so here i am just uh, again following the goldstein approach we are just not deriving the uh, velocity dependent potential rather we are just taking one velocity dependent potential u equals to q phi minus q a dot b uh is this your work does that work definitely you can check um with this velocity dependent potential uh, your lagrangian become a equals to half of m square uh, minus q phi plus q a dot b what you will do again following goldstein you just put this lagrangian uh, this particular lagrangian in lagrange's equation of motion and uh, what you will get you will get the lorentz force equation back uh you follow the derivation uh, from goldstein that you uh, take this lagrangian put this lagrangian in lagrange's uh, equation of motion and you get you, you are getting the your mass into uh, acceleration uh we should be equal to that lorentz force well now we will generalize in this thing uh, with a general term or a general formulation called monogenic system so what is a monogenic system if all forces in a system are derived from a generalized potential it is called a monogenic system so we know that what we will take the generalized force so then uh, u is a function of q q dot t lorentz force of course so we have just uh, seen the lorentz force is a monogenic force because we could derive uh, this whole equation of motion from a generalized potential velocity dependent so then uh, a monogenic system is conservative only if equals to u q so this is very one important uh, result that uh, if your uh, potential is velocity dependent then your uh, system not conservative at all there is a dissipation function of course whenever there is a velocity dependence on potential uh, some dissipation or some loss of energies are always there
So, uh, but if you, if you, it does not, if, this, if your potential is not Q, if, uh, is not velocity dependent, so then your system, of course, is conservative. And uh, as we have already seen, that Lagrange's equation works perfectly on a monogenic system. So you have a generalized velocity dependent potential. You just put the velocity dependent potential in Lagrange's equation of motion, and this works. Okay, friends. That's uh, all we uh, I uh, have that told in this lecture. So thank you very much. I'll be discussing more in my website and YouTube channel. So please subscribe my YouTube channel to get regular updates. I have a website. You all know that physics guide dot in. You visit for physics related information on this website. Thank you very much. Uh, if you like the video, please share the video with other friends. Thank you.